Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another episode in our tutorial building a render engine. So today I'd just like to do a little bit of housekeeping and uh, actually do a little something that we're going to need to do later on. Um, not necessary for right now, but in order to continue we're going to need it, so we may as well take it out today. So if you remember from last time, we built the frame buffer, so this is actually not being rendered directly to the screen. Um, so let's go ahead and make that little change. The one I'd like to make is um, if you run this, you'll notice that it's actually the coordinates are relative to here and not here. So what we need to do is, uh, well, I did not explain that very well. My apologies. So this is this coordinate is being placed, like if we go into the main file, we're placing it at coordinates 10, 10, 20, 10, 15, 20 and then we're just applying trans transformations to it. So what I'd like to accomplish today is instead of having it transform from 0, 0 being the center coordinate, we're just going to have 0, 0 in the middle, and then it's going to be a coordinate system where this is 1, this is negative 1, this is 1 over here, and then that's negative 1 over there. <coughs> and the reason for that is because that's actually how a lot of, that's you actually require that to be that way in order for 3D rendering to work. Um, because when you, just if you think of perspective, if you're looking towards a dot in the center, as you go further away from that dot, the objects around it are gonna sort of narrow themselves closer and closer to that dot. And that's the whole point of why I would do this. Because by dividing by Z, by dividing by the Z coordinate, you can actually make the objects in the in the scene appear like they're converging towards the center of the screen. And that's actually the key to 3D rendering, and we can go over that a bit later. So for now, let's go ahead and implement it. So let's go ahead and implement in the rasterizer. The reason I don't want to do this anywhere else is because I want you to be able to pass in the coordinates into the rasterizer um, as basically coordinates ranging from 0 to 1, but this rasterizer needs to be able to convert those coordinates from the 0 to 1, or negative 1 to 1 coordinate system to the coordinate system of the screen. So we could do this with a 3 by 3 matrix, but it's going to be a bit slower if we do it like that, because we have to convert all these vector 2s to vector 3s, and then multiply it by a matrix, which is a slow operation. So instead, I'd like to just do the math uh, the normal way. So first of all, because we're using the names v1, I'm just going to rename these. So vv1, vv2, and then vv3. These, notice how these are being passed as constant vector references. I don't want the vectors being passed in to be changed. However, I want to modify it for this instance. So right above these variable, actually we can do it right below the variable declarations. You can do vector2. Um, v1 because we use the name later below. Well, for now let's just set it equal to vv1 and then we can oops. and then we can actually do that for these as well and then let's go ahead and define a macro a macro that's going to um, convert these because I'm not sure I want to copy and paste that over and over. So define, um, <coughs> we can just call it convert. It's in the CPP file so you won't see it anywhere else. And for this uh, we can just pass in a, a vector, so V, and then a, um, you know, let's not even do the macro. There's really no point. Let's just make the code nice and explicit. So this is going to be equal to a vector 2. Uh, we're just going to use the operator equals. And then we're going to use the constructor. So the first thing that needs to happen is it needs to be multiplied by, if you just think about how this transformation is going to work, you need to take vv1.x and you need to multiply it by the frame buffer's width. And I'm actually going to create two integers. That way you don't have to call the function get width and height. So, whoops. Okay. 
So we have the width and height saved um, as an integer there. So instead of calling fb.getWidth, we're going to actually call, um, I'm actually going to save this as width divided by 2, and same thing with the height as well. So we can change this to h underscore height and then this to h underscore width, the h underscore meeting half. So if you multiply the value in this vector 1, or vector, ve vector 2, by the half width, and then you translate it over by the half width, that will actually put it where it needs to be. Because think about it like this. If this coordinate is 0, you multiply it by 0, and you move it over by the half width of the screen, boom, it's dead center. However, if this coordinate is negative 1, you multiply negative 1 by the half, half width, and then you get negative half width. And you add the half width, you get 0. And you'll notice that's, a, that's on this side of the screen. And then, of course, with 1, you multiply it by this, and then you add the half width, and then you end up with this coordinate. So you can sort of see how that's working out here. So, yeah, and then we can do vv1.y um, times half height plus half height. And that's exactly what you need to do. That's really the whole idea of this tutorial. And then you just change this to 2 and that to 3. And then you're good to go. And now, obviously, if we run this, it's not going to do what we want it to do. So if we go ahead and open min.cpp, oops, I guess I have that open somewhere else. Yeah, I'm going to close it here. I'm just going to close out of all this. If we go into main.cpp, and then we put this at negative 1, because remember that's the coordinate system that we're using now, so negative 1 would be all the way over here. And then on the x, we want 1 on the y, because we want a coordinate right in this location. And then I'm actually going to change this to 0, so we have no z coordinate. And then the next coordinate, I want that to be x of 1, y of 1, and then z of 0. And then I want the last coordinate to be 0, negative 1. And if I'm not mistaken, whoops, this is going to work. There we go. So you'll also notice that um, these coordinates are not in the exact location that I put them in. Uh, they're actually in the flipped direction. And the reason for that is because the way it's set up right now is actually down here is 1 on the y. And we have to fix that. So to do so, open up rasterizer.cpp. And then just go ahead and multiply the y coordinate by negative 1 that will actually fix it. That's just a small detail I forgot about. So there you go. And just like that. Now there's one more small change I'd like to make. Everywhere where I used this class, I called it Razterizer with a Z. That's wrong. So <laughs> this is not a necessary refactor, but I'd like to do so. So I'm just going to do percent %s slash Razterizer slash Razterizer G, and then I'm going to do the same thing in the rasterizer.h, and here I'll just do the oops, same thing here, and then in main.cpp I will do the same, and then I believe, I'm not sure what else uses it, we'll see when I try to compile. Um, that is an error in main.cpp, which I thought I fixed. Oh, yeah, the file is still called rasterizer, so we have to fix that. Whoops. Alright. And now, if we try to compile, no rule to make main. Yeah, because we need to go into whoops, 
our make file and then change the rasterizer here. Um, so fr make that change and this should work. There we go. Beautiful. All right, I know this was a short tutorial, but uh, we accomplished the big thing I'd like to do today. Or actually, we can go ahead and take this step further and I guess make a small change here so you can see what's actually some cool things that are happening here. So if I do while angles less than, or actually, I also would like to add one more function call to the top. I almost forgot about that. So add um, start color, start underscore color. This way we can use colors later on, and then also run the function cbreak. cbreak will allow you to terminate the program with control C. That's something I also forgot earlier. So if we just do while true, and then at the end here, oops. and then at the end we also need to call um, the function erase. If you call the function clear, it's going to have a lot of screen tearing. And uh, also, one thing I should mention is there will be a bit of screen tearing with how it is set up, just because end curses uh, the way it refreshes the screen. It unfortunately causes screen tearing, but you can be sure that this code does work um, in a normal scenario, in a normal situation, like using a normal window. I have built render engines with this code, well, similar code to this. So just know it is an end curses thing, and there's nothing specifically wrong with the code if it does screen tear. But you, using the erase function eliminates a lot of that. So if we actually call refresh before, yeah. So then call refresh, and then immediately follow that with erase. And then, if I run this, nothing will change. Yep. Except the difference is you'll notice this, this screen is blue in the background. And that's this terminal's version of black, so... Yeah. And if I just go ahead and increment angle plus equals 0 0.002 F, and then I do transformation.rotate, And then I give it angle. Whoops. Why did I do that? Beautiful. You can notice, you can clearly see that the triangle is rotating. And also, let's get rid of those pesky little dots. I forgot to open up the new files. Uh, and we also have this being called Raz to Raz Triangle still. Just change that to Rasterize. We also have to change that in the main file as well, but I believe those are all the instances of that mess up, of that being messed up. Uh, yep. So in, on the else condition in this function, just get rid of that. And this is going to error. Yep. Uh, we need to rename this to rasterizer. And then down here, there we go. A good amount of this tutorial was fixing the rasterize mistake that I made before. Yeah, but there you go. You can see the triangles rotating, and also I should note that it's not limited to that axis. I can actually go ahead and you can actually already see the 3D effects in play here. You can clearly see that this all almost looks like a 3D triangle. However, there are some slight differences that you'll notice, and we'll get into that later. But what you're viewing, what makes this look not 3D, is something called perspective projection. So we'll work on that in the next tutorial. So thank you for watching. Have a good one.